Yo, what's going on guys? I'm going to be showing you how to actually carry it on Sion Jungle for Season 12 League of Legends. He has a few different builds that work really well. In this video, I specifically want to show you his tanky build. My team is definitely on the squishier side with the Ash, Sona, and Kale. Leaving me in a spot to where if I go for the Lethality Sion build, it could definitely backfire. Just very, very risky. So first things first, get your word down, reset, get Oracle Lens, and then you can start on your first camp. The reason why Scion Jungle works is he's gotten buffs to his Q does way more damage against monsters. Helps him clear it really fast. And that's going to be your bread and butter. You're going to want to max Q first, W second, E last. You can start up your Q charge around the 128 second mark. I started up about a second late. Sorry about the allergies in it advanced. In advance. Gonna bop him with the auto and full Q charge into another auto. We're gonna go ahead and get our shield now. It's gonna be very helpful for uh, stacking up our permanent HP, plus very useful to have. I should have held my Q charge longer, but we did need to cancel our W, which you can do while you're still holding your Q. You can activate or cancel your W to make its damage go off early, before, during, or after a Q channel. All of the above. So for example, I can start it up here, walk up, and then bonk and even hold it. This is what makes Scion jungle so stable and consistent. It makes him a pretty good jungler. At least along the lines of being able to clear his camps. This clear is so ridiculously healthy. And um, it's not easy to invade. Even if you're playing something like Zin Zhao, Cyan can usually scrap it out. Or at the very least get away from that type of situation. Going to drop the Q charge. Bada boom. And we'll pull Blue and Gromp together here. That way we can take them same time with our AoE abilities. If you don't want them to break your shield, you can start up your Q first, then start up your W like I did there, and let him have it. We're going to hit him both again with another AoE. If you clear properly on Scion, it will look, in terms of speed, about like a Master E clear. You'll be finishing around 330 full HP or close to it with at least one refill left. I'm gonna take this guy's shield off. Looks like they're junglers here. I'm most likely gonna get pinched. She has conquer. This might be kind of hard to uh, scrap it out all the way. She's most likely gonna flash here. All right, she didn't flash. That's fine. Saw our HP advantage. She just couldn't fight that at all. The reason why we didn't Q is because she had her flashed. If I were to charge up a full Q, she's just going to flash it. We could have used our Q as an auto attack reset at point blank range, and it would have slowed, though. So that would have been another good option. We're going to come up behind her. We'll hit her with our E. Got our W on. Got her with the knockup into W. I wanted to secure that kill, so I held on to my W. Waited for Kel to do one auto attack. We're going to want to push this so Kel can reset. I'm not going to go out of my way to steal the minions at the same time. I am going to blast them with all my damage. It's more about getting the XP than the gold itself. On your first recall, you're really looking to get boots on Scion. After that, everything else is bonus. I think what we want to get is this Bomby Cinder. Frostfire is a really, really good item for this build. Because with the Predator, you're moving ridiculously fast. You come up behind the enemies. You can lead in with an auto attack, which will slow them from Frostfire. And since they're slow, they won't be able to dodge your E. And since they're slow from Frostfire and your E, then they won't be able to dodge your Q. That is the plan. These guys are shoved up. They haven't backed yet. This is an easy gank since we have Predator. If we didn't have Predator, this wouldn't be very easy. Since we're behind them, we're going to go ahead and Predator. We'll turn on our W. it off close to a full Q charge and just had really no follow-up there it happens got her with our slow ash panic pressed her summoner she used her flash and she definitely didn't need to there we'll just go back into a full clear very disappointed we didn't get that kill I saw Shaco didn't have flash so I decided to go for him we ran him down with oracles on 
Just didn't quite have enough damage. Might be able to go back again here in a second. We're already getting 200 bonus HP from our W. That's kind of crazy. That's so much HP. You get extra against large monsters. Large minions, large monsters give you a lot. I'm gonna get her with the bowling ball. There's the slow. Oh, almost caught her with the knock up on it. I think Shaco's out of mana here. Yeah, he's just gonna die. Down goes Shaco. I'm gonna predator into her. Hit her with an E into Q. We get zero follow up. She panic flashes. We need to continue our full clear. Also, apologies in advance. I have to blow my nose. This is getting bad. We're starting to get some drippage here. <laughs> Something about playing Scion gives me allergies. E into Q. We have our W on. Look how fast we take that camp. Disgusting. You can go for phase rush on Scion. That works better if you're playing him with lethality with Prowlers. That's an okay option. Predator generally is going to be your best bet for ganking. Uh, so for the first 15 minutes of the game, Predator is going to be way better. Once you are level 6, Predator isn't quite as useful because a lot of the times you'll lead into ganks with your R. But still, having that Predator option, you can gank with R and then the next gank, use Predator. So it's a really, really good rune for Scion to close distance since he has very little mobility in his kit. Outside of his R. Outside of his R. We can get Quinn. She doesn't have flash. We need to line up the R. We can't really coast it around that wall, but we can get it right here. And she's not really reacting to it. I had to cancel it. Got on my W. We get her with the slow into Q. When it comes to charging your Q, you want to charge it for as long as possible while still landing it. So if you have to let it go early, that's perfectly fine as long as you land it. Since monsters aren't trying to juke it, you can always really hit them with a full charge. The longer you charge it, more damage it does. And the longer the knockup will be. I'll bowling ball them. Boom. Your E shreds magic. I mean, uh, armor. Shreds 20% of their armor. It's pretty good. Predator's up. We'll use Predator running behind her. I wish my E was up. There we go. I canceled my Q. Because I thought I was going to get feared. We got her flash, so that's pretty good. We'll go bot. She apparently missed her ability, but if it would have hit me, it would have feared me out of my Q. So I let it go early. I'm going to hold on to my W here. Killing a few autos anyways. Oh, hey, Diana. We're going to blue smite her. We'll get her with our slow. I'm going to flash W. That's awesome. Well played by the set. We'll stay for a plate. Might as well. We could go for dragon off of that. That'd be a decent option. We're going to have to back off. That's fine. We can take Raptors into Crux and gank bot. We see our bot lanes backing. By the time we finish Raptors Crux, they'll be back in lane. Mark my words. Knock up into the W. We'll finish Krugs and then it should be set up for us. Just keep an eye on the mini map. It gives you all the answers. It's a big cheat sheet that a lot of players just don't take advantage of. The answers are all right there on the mini map for you. Just watch the little pitchers move across. Get a pretty good idea of how fast those little pitchers can move, how long things will take. And now we are in the right place at the right time, and we were farming to get here. You get that W max second. Oracles, it's warded. I'll predator just in case she wasn't paying attention. That's fine. As silly as that gank looked, we still got some stuff out of it. Plus, we can R from this bush if we really want to. I'm going to go ahead and reset because we're sitting on such a big item back. We can get Frostfire and Tier 2 boots. 
Sion jungle struggles a lot versus champions that can quickly cancel his Q. Things like Viego jungle can be annoying. Lee Sin can be annoying with his R as well. And since Sion's so tanky, when Lee Sin blasts him into his team, the Lee Sin Sion missile does a lot of damage to Sion's team. In terms of uh, squishy junglers who can't instantly cancel your Q, you'll play fine against them like Evelyn, Echo, Diana, that type of stuff you'll be fine against. Against other tank junglers, you'll be fine against. Oof, this damage feels so good. We're at 567 bonus HP already. We'll R for the spec. She's going to think I'm coming from the front. She's going to start running just like this. Right into my grasp. Hit her with a full charge Q. Into EW. And then I still got the kill. Set almost KS'd me. For that, I'm going to take those minions. He should stay for the plates, realistically. There's no reason for him to come over here. Let you into the wall. Full Q charge. Diana's top side. This is free dragon. Easy free drag. Shaco's chilling. He's out of mana. My bot lane's backing at not the best time. Luckily, I just finished. As you get more and more points in your R, your clears get exponentially faster because of its bonus damage. You start to really feel, feel that speed from it. The Q hitbox kind of starts from the center of your body. Even if you're standing on top of something, oftentimes you can hit it. I just barely missed it there. Oh well. Commentator's Curse. I guess it's not technically the center. It's kind of the frontal 30-40%. So like, for example, even right there. It's an easy knockup. If I was even like this, it would be as well. It's just as long as it's on your front 30% portion, I should say. Predator's up, ready to use. Looking for a gank. I don't see anything bought. Don't see anything mid. Diana's on Herald. I should probably head over there. Wish I had my R to get over there and make things a lot simpler. Wow, their whole team's over here, apparently. We're going to hit her with a E into Q. She used a silly little dash to get away from us. Still not 100% familiar with Ziri. Big R into W E Q. We slowed him, trying to stop him from getting to that wall to jump over. Quinn drops Harold. We might be able to pick her. She doesn't have tier 2 boots, so we should be moving faster than her. As long as she doesn't get into bird form, she should die. Bowling ball, bowling ball, bowling ball. Oh, she ran past me. Mm, I hope Quinn can get that. I kind of want to stop Harold. And boom. We are now at 800 bonus HP. That is spicy. Vex is shoving up mid. I'm going to go teach her a lesson if she stays. All right, she did not stay. After you hit someone with your R knockup, ideally, you do hit them with an E before you go in for the Q since your E does shred their armor. So after the R, you uh, W, E, Q. Charge up as much of your Q as you can. Depending on how much tenacity they have, it can shorten it because your Q is a knockup and a stun. Once they land, it's a stun, and that's when their tenacity is going to start helping them out. Our R is not up, so we don't have to look for a gank right now. Even if we predated for this, it wouldn't be that easy because she's midway point. Sona's there to scare her away, too. Shaco's taking control words. That's kind of annoying. Oh, we see you, buddy. And down he goes. Got him with the blue smite. I don't think we're going to be able to get to this chick. I think she's got to jump over stuff, so I think we can. Full knockup. Now auto attack W. Down she goes. And I'm pretty sure she parkours over stuff like Talon, so I think she actually has to be near something to hop over. I kind of want to get scuttled then and kill Vex. Don't know if I can one-shot her right now anyways. 
I am tank scion and not lethality scion, so my burst damage is a little bit lacking. All right, we know where Diana is. We know where she's going to come from. We could also gank bot from this position, going in from behind behind them gank. Ooh, no Shaco sees me. That sucks. Shaco knows exactly where I am. He just randomly walked into me because he took a weird path. Back to the lane. Hey, Shaco. Double knockup. Yeah, it's that one. The clone takes more damage. Clone takes 50% more damage. So whichever one's getting lower on health is usually going to be the clone. It's an easy way to tell. We can go mid off this. This angle's kind of hard to hit. I'll just hit it from here. Oh, we missed. Dang. We should have canceled our R sooner. Got the Q. Down she goes. I got that kill as well. We're getting so much bonus HP off this. We can tank for our team. Sit on the outskirts. Team's not really that interested though. We'll look for a blue drop and a reset. We're sitting on a full item back, so we should recall here soon. Dragon's actually up. We need to go for Dragon. I'll pop Predator, get there sooner. Inside of my circle here. Inside of the designated range. Really want to take Blue Grunt Wolves reset. It's just that dragon spawn while the Quinn's dead and the enemies are low underneath her. This, this play makes more sense. It's going to set up the late game as well. If we get dragons, though, there's really no way to lose the late game unless the enemy comp is 80% stronger. And I think our comp is probably better because they have uh, Shaco and we have Sona. Sona late game is way better than Shaco support late game. I'm going to grab this wave. I don't want her to get turret. I also want this cannon minion. Truth be told. Cannon minions give you lots and lots of bonus HP. 15. That is spicy. 15 for champion takedown. So kills and assists on champs. 15 for large minions and 15 for large monsters. That's a lot of bonus HP. We're at a free 1000 HP right now. This is why Scion and Cho'Gath are the only real tanks in League of Legends right now. They're the only tanks who get legitimate heaps of free hp from an ability in their kit go ahead pick up thornmel into uh we could go team at at this point you have a lot of magic damage yeah i guess we'll go team at that's fine thornmel is a really really good option cuts into the quinn Iziri. if they auto me they die if diana autos me she'll die just by hitting me I think we can just wrap this game up from here. We did a pretty good job pressuring the map. We have 14 out of 17 KP. Pretty happy with that. They're inside of my R circle on the mini map. Means we can reach them. Oh. Double knock up. Or single knock up, I should say. We'll blue smite him. Had to flash E auto him, man. He wouldn't die. And we are ridiculously tanky. We're tanking the turret like it's nothing. Oh man, this champion's so broken. It's a lot like playing a Cho jungle, except you're a little bit more mobile due to your due to your R. Cho'Gath doesn't have any actual mobility in his kit. You're also so you're an AD Cho'Gath, basically a mobile AD Choder. Feels very similar, especially since I played them both with uh, Predator. It helps to cover up some of their weaknesses, having that extra added mobility. Got the Ziri Flash. That's decent. Wish I had my R to run that down. Ooh, these guys are being really aggressive on my Sona. Once again, if we had R or Predator, this would be a, a freebie. <laughs> I think Quinn realizes what's happening here. I canceled my Q early. I'll run Quinn down with Blue Smite on. Drop the R. And I think this, yeah, that was the real one. He actually thought he could kill me. That's cute. They had absolutely no chance there with my items versus their items. I'm also not as close to death as they think. Like, I have as much HP as one of them has. 
Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this Scion Jungle commentary guide for Season 12, playing him the tank way. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. My name is Kingsticks, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time. Looking at damage dealt enemy champions, we had a nice little lead for damage taken. We had a, uh, not even the most. I'm a little surprised by that. We have 13k compared to a 15k. Let's look at self-mitigated damage. That might tip the scales. Yeah, 22k. We mitigated way more damage than we even took. We took 15k, we self-mitigated 22k, so I think that makes up for it. For runes, Predator did 440. It's more about the moonsweep than the damage. Cheap shot 600. Eyeball collection was maxed out and Genie's Hunter was maxed out, giving us item cooldown reduction and, well, I guess I'll call it ability haste. Woo! And it was also giving us Predator ability haste, obviously, because that counts as an item. And then... Uh, <laughs> that was very passive aggressive yes i know and then uh conditioning gave us percent game active it was active for 41 percent of the game so pretty substantial chunk it's more of a late game room anyways it doesn't kick in until i think 10 or 11 minute mark maybe it's a minute mark i don't remember kicks in later total bonus armor 19 bon bonus total magic is 13 fairly substantial for a single side rune and then overgrowth gave us a bonus 213 which is practically nothing when you consider the passive on our w gave us like 1200 bonus hp but still 200 hp that's more than a ruby crystal so over 400 gold worth of an item on all, all scion jungle is a pretty solid carry and he's a whole lot of fun highly recommend it as long as the j enemy jungle matchup isn't too nasty